I am a wiener. If you've ever watched any of me and BB's Let's Plays of survival horror games, you know that I am a complete wimp and am always the first one to panic. So maybe explore a bit more in this one. Oh, ah! Ah! Jesus! And you don't have to scope. No. Oh my god! Despite my raging cowardice, survival horror games might rank in my top three favorite genre of video game. I love when games make you feel something, and that feeling of dread and panic comes in abundance when horror games are crafted with the right amount of pacing. But what if along with that lurking sense of anxiety, you added a little pinch of silliness to the formula? Now, clearly, anyone who's eaten a Jill sandwich knows that Resident Evil has always had a little bit of camp to mellow out the scares. But what if instead of a little pinch, we add a whole whopping bucket full? If games like Resident Evil and Dead Space are the creme brulee of horror games, then Choo Choo Charles is a graham cracker that a cocaine addicted baker added a metric ton of goof to. Inspired by the absolutely hilarious Thomas the Tank Engine mod found for Resident Evil 2 Remake, Choo Choo Charles takes the idea of a nightmare locomotive constantly stalking the player character and absolutely chugs with it. But how does this absurd attempt at a humor horror genre translate into an enjoyable gameplay experience? And how far can such a ridiculous premise be stretched to make a video game long enough to justify its price tag? The answer is honestly kind of mixed. Choo Choo Charles isn't lighting the video game world on fire, and honestly, it's hard to say that it's worth its price point. I'm Dirty C, and before we begin, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below, as this will only bring your wildest dreams to fruition and make me feel all warm and fuzzy. Choo Choo Charles was absolutely outrageous. Let's talk about it. I know it's been a while since we last spoke, but something has happened at the mines I've been supervising. No, trust me, you'll want to make time for this. You're looking for something big to keep your museum in business. Well, there's something big on that island. Real big. So many friends. And even my own son are still out there. If anyone can bring this thing down, it's you. It'll be the biggest attraction your city's ever seen. And you can help an old friend. Yes, meet me on the docks at sunset. I hope you're ready for a little monster hunt. Let's be real. I don't think anyone is playing Choo Choo Charles for the writing. And true to expectation, the story isn't winning any Pulitzers anytime soon. You play as an unnamed protagonist known only as the Archivist, a monster hunter that has been hired to hunt down and eliminate Charles, a sentient train engine that has gone rogue and is terrorizing the people of the isolated island Erinirum. Upon meeting and helping various NPCs, the Archivist learns that a mysterious cult run by mining company owner Warren Charles III is protecting three of Charles's eggs. The Archivist is responsible for snatching these eggs from the clutches of Warren and his cult in an attempt to destroy Charles and keep them from hatching into even more rogue train engines. Like I said, not exactly winning the Nobel Prize for Literature. Clearly, the story in Choo Choo Charles is there to provide some sense of motivation for the character and isn't really the focal point of the experience. 
It lacks any kind of real thematic focus, and is really just a hodgepodge of various generic storytelling tropes thrown together to fill the void of protagonist motivation. But this isn't a bad thing, in fact, it really just adds to the overall absurdity of the game. It plays its part in making the experience as over the top as possible. At no point does the story in Choo Choo Charles ever take itself seriously, and that's exactly what it has to do to make such a ridiculous game concept work. The gameplay loop in Choo Choo Charles is simple, but effective. Players are tasked with building up their very own rinky-dink tank engine from a chug-chug rust bucket to an impenetrable death machine in order to eventually take down Charles. Players do this through traversing the map, collecting scrap to upgrade their train's defense and weapons, as well as using it to repair their train after taking damage from Charles. Scrap can be collected in individual piles, but where the real pay dirt comes in is from completing NPC missions found throughout the island. NPC missions are separated into three groups, main missions, side missions, and weapon missions. Side missions pay out in large scrap piles Weapon missions allow you to collect various types of weaponry for your train, while main missions progress the story. All of these missions primarily consist of fetch quests, with some extremely colorful NPCs asking you to run errands for them amidst Charles stalking the island. One particularly memorable quest involves exploring an abandoned cave in order to find a jar of pickles for a local resident. I need my pickles! Though for the most part, missions consist of an outlandishly weird local asking you to fetch something, a few of them have interesting twists that range from platforming parkour mechanics to stealth mechanics, which only adds to the random hodgepodge of absurdity that is the nature of this game. While the main gameplay loop consists of completing missions to acquire scrap, players can freely explore to find different customizable colors for their tank engine, and also find notes that add to the lore of Erinirum. But does any of this sound remotely scary? Well, when you realize that Charles is stalking you the entire time, yeah, it kind of does. There is a slight sense of anxiety while freely exploring the island, knowing that any time Charles could just show up and force you to make a run for it back to the refuge of your train. Honestly, in my experience, these chase sequences caused more raucous laughter than blood-curdling screams. Which again, is not a bad thing. It provided just as much entertainment as me and my buddy laughs our asses off watching this outrageous nightmare train chase us to our doom. The only real drawback of the gameplay loop is that the late game scrap collection gets tedious. Due to having to repair your train after Charles attacks, and the fact that you lose scrap every time you die, means that late game scrap is kind of rare. After completing all the missions, you'll likely find yourself still needing scrap to fully max out your train. In my playthrough, this resulted in aimlessly riding around the map in search of scrap for a solid half an hour just to fully upgrade everything on my train. Honestly, this was really only a minor inconvenience, but was really annoying late game, especially going into the final climax of the game. Much like everything else in Choo Choo Charles, some of the game design decisions 
were just weird. Like I said, some of the mission designs seemed like they were just random ideas thrown together. For example, there are three missions that are supposed to be played as stealth missions. Though the game gives you no stealth mechanics whatsoever outside of allowing you to peek around corners. Honestly, I just blew through these sections and opted for running through them like a feral chicken rather than actually doing anything remotely stealthy. Other weird decisions include a random parkour and platforming section and a mission involving the avoidance of an underwater creature. If you suffer from thalassophobia, you might want to skip that one. But where the game design in Choo Choo Charles falls short is in its thinly stretched concept and runtime. None of the narrative or gameplay concepts prevalent in Choo Choo Charles are deep enough to sustain a long enough and engaging gaming experience. I literally platinumed this game in four hours and have no motivation to ever go back and play it again. And with a price tag of $20, players are going to have a hard time coming to terms with such a short experience. Is Choo Choo Charles scary? Sometimes, yeah, I guess. Can it constitute as a survival horror game? Sure, why not? It's a fun enough romp that shoots more for the absurdity of what video games can be, more so than trying to craft a harrowing horror experience. And in that regard, it totally crushes its goal. Choo Choo Charles, with its rapidly thrown together hodgepodge of all around randomness, is simply ridiculous in the most awesome way. But I do not think that's enough to make up for its simple gameplay design, incredibly short runtime, and high price tag. In short, Choo Choo Charles is fun, but simply not worth it. If you stuck with me this far into the video, then you are nothing short of amazing. If you've already subbed, you have earned my lifetime respect. If you haven't yet, please consider doing so, and I will see each and every one of you in the next video.